Okay, it looks like we're live. So, welcome back. Um, today, I'm going to be configuring NeoVim, as the title suggests. So, right now, I've been a Vim user. Uh, it was about two years ago when I switched to uh, Linux from Windows. I started using Vim, uh, just lightly though. Uh, and I learned like some of the basic key bindings. And I was using up until just like two months ago or so, in VS Code, I was using the Vim plugin to that, and I was just using VS Code. And then I switched to NeoVim using uh, this as like the uh, default, basically, a NeoVim distro, basically, nvchad. Um, yeah, so if you're interested, it's here. And it's pretty good. Uh, it's just more than I want, basically. Like, um, so there's a lot of stuff here that I don't use. Like, I never use this. Uh, if I do anything with the files, then why well, mess things up? Um, then I just use this, find files. Um, so that's something that I will want in my uh, config. And then I also want a built-in terminal like this. I use that a lot. Um, and then a few other things like autocomplete or whatever, like that. Um, <clears throat> but I don't need all the features that it provides. And it's going to be useful to just learn uh, how to configure it. Um, like just for knowing how to do that is better. Uh, yeah, so right now, uh, let's see. I have neovim.backup. So I'm going to. Actually, I won't do that. I'll move the neovim to neovim. There we go. Okay, that's what I need. Uh, and then I'll move. <coughs> there we go. Okay. Now, this is my old one. Uh, I didn't. Like, when I was just using neovim. Uh, not very much in here, it's just I have like a uh, port or whatever because uh, I was testing with that. Hey there, how you doing? Uh, in it, dot, yeah, so there's not very much in here, just a couple things. Um, like line numbers or whatever. And then, okay, so that is what I've got now. So I'm not really sure how to configure NeoVin. I know it uses Lua and stuff. I don't know that much about it, so I pulled up this tutorial, and basically I'm going to be following it, and then uh, hopefully I understand basically what's going on, and then I'll be able to configure it more from there. Um, so this doesn't deal with plugins in this tutorial. Uh, I was looking, and this is probably going to be a plugin that I'll install. It seems to be a popular one. Uh, it's like autocomplete or whatever. Uh, yes. So, yeah. So here, <coughs> I'll just... Let's see, that's a Vim file. So in here, this is a Lua file now. Um, yeah. So that is the start, basically. Uh, so let's see, move it into there, which is there. So that is that is where I'm at. Okay. Then open the file in NeoVim. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, whoops. Oh yeah. Uh, so I have this old init dot vim. Uh, I will <coughs> just do that and then move it all into init dot lua. So I don't know if this will work, but I'll set that in it. Uh, it probably won't. But then I'll remove init dot vim. Uh, let's see. All right. Yeah. So that doesn't work. So I'll just remove it. Uh, there we go. Now it'll work better. Uh, yeah. Okay. First thing you'll see is section title leader. So that's here. Uh, the two leader keys are defined. So, yeah. That is basically just the... I'll probably change those. Uh, let's see. Change these values to whatever you'd like by replacing the character inside the string. Yeah. Imports. These are other Lua files that NeoVim will initialize whenever you run the program. Separating your code down into modular files is a good way. To improve read a bit. Alright, variables, options, key maps, plugins. Okay. Called a Vim API. So new Vim integrates very well with existing Vim functionality. You'll find that new Vim is capable of playing very well with Vim in many ways. Uh bootstrap that. Okay. I don't have a an existing Vim uh, configuration file because like I said, I never really got too deep into Vim, just learned some basic keybinds and that was it basically. Um working on changing that though. Okay, particular Vim API. All right, yeah, set there. So yeah, <clears throat> so this is setting the variables, and there's something down here about printing. 
Yeah. All right, we can actually do it like this. Uh, print API. Map leader. Okay, there we go. That seems to work. Very nice. Okay. So leader key. So yeah, if we just change this to X, uh, which I won't leave it as X, but. I messed that up. I might need to reload it actually. Yeah. All right. So we'll just reload it and then we'll type that one more time. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So that works. So I will change this back to the comma for now. Uh, all right. Let's use Lua to set one or two more global variables in this configuration. In here, uh, we'll look for any files that are included in the slash Lua subdirectory. All right, require name of file. Okay, for most users, this will mean. All right, yeah. So this is what I've got. Uh, okay, create a new slash. All right, so we're gonna be using this. So let's make their uh, Lua. Okay, make Lua and then make their. I uh, know, touch. Lua bears dot Lua. Okay. Oops. There we go. Alright, now we've got this. And now we can set stuff in. So, I don't know if these are just comments or what, but I will set them. Uh, let's see. Local g equals min dot g. g dot t co equals 256. g dot background equals dot. So, I'm assuming that's just basically uh, configuration stuff. I'm going to code you have to write by aliasing then okay okay I see sets the global variable tco to 256 for 256 colors and whichever ter terminal annulator you are using which is alacrity if you're interested um final line sets the global variable variable background to tell new of whether or not the terminal background will use dark all right let's change it to light and see what happens Right, it didn't work. Uh, let's see. Perhaps I am missing something. Alright, well, we will leave that and perhaps there's a way to reset it or something. Oh, uh, let's see. <coughs> Make them in handy and you're solidifying your scene. Save the file and go back to your internet Lua and then comment. Yeah, it requires videos. So I did that. We'll load all code in there. You can confirm the variable. Alright, uh. Left. Alright, so that is working. Um, I guess it just doesn't change it because it's not actually setting the key. It's just setting a variable. Uh, yeah, we're gonna use dark, of course. Not, I mean, <laughs> the light mode, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, okay. When you specify the. Alright, now, yes, to learn more about. You money plan help name a variable in command mode. Okay, set options to customize your experience. This is where you'll really start to see your configuration tape shape. Spend most of your time setting options to tell new them how you want your development environment to operate both functionally and aesthetically. For instance, options allow you to determine settings for white space, line numbers, search functionalities. Yeah, so that's that is cool stuff. Like variables, you can set options in Lua by using the NeoVim API. Alright, um uh, it's equivalent to set alright, so I think uh let's see. Ops <coughs> let's go in here. Let's do that. Uh, let's go to Lua and Ops. And then we'll let me try. Not O. Let's see. Uh, number. Does that eat? I'm just trying some things. Um, did not work. Okay. All right, that does work. Alright, this API also exposes. Alright, I am going to set local for window options. Alright, so let's see. Alright, yeah, let's include ops.lua. Alright, perhaps this is. Alright, opt. Yeah, local opt equals spin.opt. 
Alright. Uh, I don't need. I'm pretty sure these are just comments. I'm not going to include all of them. Dot color column equals 80. Dot number. Oh, okay, so that's how you do. Off that number equals true. Okay. Dot, no, I don't want red supply numbers. Uh, the, they can help with things, but they always confuse me. Scroll off equals 4. I'll change all these. Um, equals. Yes. Alright, let me reload that. Okay. Uh, that's kind of weird. Uh, let's see. And that? Yeah, I don't like that. What is the sign called? Sign column? Yeah, okay. Not sure what it is. I can make sure all the time. Alright, uh, I don't care. I don't want that right now. Uh, I'll leave it commented. Uh, let's see. Off that encoding equals UTF8. Okay. Off that file encoding equals UTF8. That's probably something we can just keep the same. Uh, theme. Off that theme or dot syntax equals on. Dot Term blue colors equals true. I don't care. Case equals true. Uh, I don't know if I want that actually. Sometimes. Ooh, okay. This actually overwrites it. Okay, yeah. I do want that. I want smart case. Yes. Huh? That smart case equals true. So that is all good. Link search equals true. Uh, dot gel search equals false. Alright, um, highlight search matches, I do want that. Uh, I do, so that doesn't highlight, it does still highlight, so I don't know what that does. Uh, something is not good, I don't, I don't like these colors, it's too bright, I think that you're doing it. Yeah, I like it better like that. Okay, got expand tab equals true, use spaces instead of tabs, um, okay. Gotta do it right though. Dot shift width equals four. <coughs> Alright, yeah, four is good. Off dot soft tab stop equals four. Number of spaces tabs count for in insert mode. Alright. Dot tab stop equals four. Okay. Okay, and we'll do the last thing. Off that split right equals true. That split below equals true. Alright, so these are like windows. Alright, uh, alright. So let me try out the tab. Yep, four, that is good. So if we are whoops, doing that, uh, yes. No. Yep, alright, that looks good to me. Uh, whoops. Okay. Click new window to the right. All right. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. First, we set a local variable off, so we don't have to type them that off. All right. Very nice. First group context defines options for your lines when you're in the screen. All right. Yeah. I understand what it all does, basically. So, yes, we've got that. Set key mappings. Yes. So this is very important. Key mappings. Um. So let's in keys dot Lua. Save that. Uh, init that blue. And we will do this. Whoops. Okay. Let's then choose that blue. So, I mean, I'll keep the comment for this. Keys that blue. I like that. Okay. Local map bin. Whoops. Equals bin dot api dot mn set key map. Alright, that is a good one. Map, okay. It's like, uh, you can call it that. <coughs> mode, the mode you want the keyline to apply in. Okay, so that's insert mode. Sequence of keys to press. The command you want the key presses to execute. An optional Lua table of options to configure, e.g. E silent or normal. 
Okay. Uh, so, all right. Well, let's. So that makes it to leave insert mode. You have to type JK. It seems. All right. These are just like blank. All right. So let's see. insert. You need to type JK. All right. Uh, I don't know that I want that. I like just kind of escape. Yeah, I mean that that's a good thing. Alright, uh yeah. Command, alright, yes. The line key manager is available in insert mode. The sequence key is to press is JK and this will call the escape command. Yeah, so I don't think I need to include this key words for that one. Uh yes. There are no additional options configured here, but you still need to pass curly braces. Alright, that makes sense. If you save the file, try a new command straight away, you might notice that it doesn't work. That's because you usually need to refresh your NeoVim buffer before any configuration change will take effect. Uh, although this would work, you can simply source the current file by calling real file. Okay. okay. Alright, require keys. Okay, uh, yeah, plugins. Alright, let's look at plugins now. So I will go through and add some custom stuff after but mostly uh, we actually have new them here so let's see is there some guides mm -hmm. documentation perhaps all right let's see does it have so I'm pretty sure like tabs are in new them <coughs> like by default like yeah, tab page. Um, opening a new tab page. Uh, yeah, there is tab. So how do you shift between them? What is the key by it? Uh, double click with the mouse and then opens a new empty tab page. Let's place the left. Okay, tab new. Tab new. Alright, so we'll add a keybind for that. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, count, open new tab page and edit the file. Okay, tab split. Let's have a page with help for GT. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Closing a tab page. Tab C. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, tab close. All right, so let's see. Let's look at this actually. Uh, so. Uh, well, let's see. So, what would we want to equal a uh, new tab? Something like uh, I don't know if this will work. Uh, let's do comma and then comma dot. Something like that, just to try. It. Um, all right, and let's see. So, command. Yeah. So, we, let's do. How do we? Changes to visual mode. Actually, let's do something like that. Perhaps I'm not doing this right. Um, yes. All right. Um, let's 
see. Alright, well, let us continue in here. Uh, I will call it. Well, I guess since it doesn't do anything, I'll know. Okay, this is where NeoVim plus Lua third party plugins means you have unlimited accessibility. Okay, plugin manager. Alright, um. Vim plug. Packer. Alright, let's see. Can we install this? If it'll load. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Start. Uh, get clone. There's also an AUR package. Alright, let's install that. Exit out of here, exit out of here. <coughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna install it. Okay, it is installing. Might take a moment. All right. Okay, not too bad. So let's see how to use this. Uh, Emacs, yes. I'm not giga chat enough to use Emacs. Packer is built on top of Vim's native functionality. Okay, Packer needs to be installed somewhere in your pack pack. These are directories. Okay. Let me see. So let's Lua punch Vim.o.pack pack. Okay, oh shoot. Alright. Config slash new Vim. Okay. Okay. Um. In other words, packing can be installed in the same directory. Alright, well, I think I have it installed then. So, in your NeoVim. Alright, let's go back here. Uh huh. Alright, site. Uh, let me see. So, I'm not sure where it installed it, but let's see if it'll work. Uh, if I go here. Yeah, we will require a plug that Lua. Okay. Lua check. Uh, plug not found. Okay. Well, now it, now it is found. Uh, okay. Plug that Lua. Alright. And we get rid of that. Turn. Require. Packer. Dot startup. Function U. Alright, and all of them go here, and it is closed with that. No, it's closed with that. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, unexpected symbol. Um, why is it unexpected? Uh, well, let's type this and then end. Oh, that is why. Okay, that makes sense. Config equals package root equals vim dot function sv path config dot dot site slash pack. Okay, uh, yeah. And then we'll close off that and close off that. Here we go. Let's see. Alright, here equal. And line three. So it closes here, it doesn't like that. Uh, did I forget to close something else? Let's see, the code box says load packer. This time you have started, also says the package root. 
and comment the line that imports your plugins mod. Alright, um. Alright, I'm not sure why it's getting an error. We'll just continue and see see if it starts to work. All right. Might see an error that reads packer not found. That's not what it says, so it in here and see if something comes up. Yeah, so this is the same thing. Alright, that's not the issue though. Uh, Alright, let's go back into plug.ua. So I'll return require packer dot startup function use and I get rid of this. Then there is no problem. So let's see, let's go back here. Let's rewrite this. Object equals that. Package root equals home dot function dot std pack config. There we go. Nope. There we go. Config. Let's see. Site slash pack. Right. Um. If I put it all on one line, what is this here? Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see. It's not what I want. Let's see. 
does it work? No. If I get rid of this, and it does work. Uh, no, it's not working with this. Alright, now it works. But once we add the config there, it does not. So that breaks it. Um, Nip. Okay. Alright, so it looks like it is working. Okay. Um there we go. Alright, NVIM tree. Nerd tree. Let's look at that. Whoops. Uh whoops. Okay, nerd tree. Um, yeah, I don't know that I need that exactly. Inventory. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I don't really need a tree. Uh, I might set it up. Plug that blue and add new entry. Okay, let's see. Use. Site inventory dot dot Lua requires equals kinvin forty two and then with the pawns. Two pawns, there we go. Okay. Let's see if that works. Alright. Hacker install. All the plugins. If anything goes wrong, right. if anything goes wrong, it'll tell you. Do you install the plugin? You still need room to ensure. Okay. All right. In the init dot Lua. We'll go down here. Plugin. Fire. Inventory. Dot set. There we go. Okay. All right, now if we go to Lua slash keys, whoop, then keys, okay. Then we can do map n n and then to taco. Let me just try that. Okay. Alright, let's write that. <coughs> um Alright. D sequence units that. leader key okay all right I think we need to do let's just reload that yeah, all right and then tree toggle okay once you've saved and sourced all your files you should be able to toggle the file tree open and close and also jump between anything on the file tree all right Okay, control W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, control W doesn't work. Alright, uh, yes, that is cool. Alright, let me go back into here.
tab new. Okay, yes, that does work. Oh, let's quit that. Uh, let's make this maybe like A or something. So we do that. Yeah, tab new. Okay. Uh, as well as letter N and the command execute. Alright, I think I'm probably going to change the, uh, let's see, I kind of want it to be maybe controller space or something, so, does just like control work? I'm assuming it won't. Uh, let's see, control and then, what was it actually? Uh, control N. Alright, just pressing N more. Alright, let's see if we change this, let's see, space. Alright, so you just have to press the key. Uh, I don't want to do that. I want it to have the. Uh, I want it to require that. So I can't do something like that. Or yeah, because I don't want it. Yeah. Alright, there we go. Yeah, but I want control. Or space. Space work. No, so that doesn't work. Um, let's see, is there some other way? Alright, uh, how do you reference space? Dun, 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 dun. Or control or something like that. Um, map space. Yeah. Uh huh. Control. <coughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. That works. Yeah, that's good. Uh, space is good. Yeah, tab new. Okay, very cool stuff. So let's see what else we have. Looking good. Uh, start screen, I don't need that. Help you see your cursor jump. What does that mean? Got a lot of tabs open here. Uh, yeah. Whenever your cursor jumps on this and moves to the windows, it'll flash so you can see where it is. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Should I add that? Mm. Maybe not. A status line written in New England color scheme. Um, yeah, I mean, the default color scheme, that's fine for me right now. I might find another one, but yeah. This one's good. Uh, let's see. What do I can look? Uh, oh yes, that might I might actually want to install it. Let's see. All right, so in let's see which one do uh, plug. <coughs> we do what this. Lua line slash lua one dot ending requires. And then trees, and then web icons. Opt equals two. Okay. And let's go back here. And let's go to init.lua and require. And then lua line dot set up. Alright, let's see. 
Okay, that's not right. Uh, Right, um, let's see. <coughs> alright, uh, alright, it's just a little line. Oh yeah, you know what the problem is? I did not actually install install it using packer packer install. Okay, installed that. So let's see. Now, all right, there we go. So yeah, now we've got some stuff going on here. Yeah, all right, that is very nice. I do quite like that. Uh, what else? What else do we have? Uh, yeah, let's add a theme. Yeah, I don't need the theme. Uh, okay, actually. Alright, uh. Alright, let's see if I can install this. Uh, no, not that. Nvim complete. Alright, set up. Uh, let's see if we can do this packer. Packer installation. Okay. <coughs> let's see. So perhaps these are actually supposed to be separated onto different levels. That looks good. Alright, not install that. Um, don't know why. Let's see. And it's all still working, it seems. do this Hirsch 7 slash nvim complete fires equals all this stuff right, let me actually close this um And then I can just copy this. Alright, and let's see if I can write that. Fail to install. Alright, so that's the same thing that failed. Uh, that's okay. Let's see then.
require plugins. LSP config. Alright, CCLS seven. some of this stuff here. Mm -hmm. When packing and install the admin, exit new room and open an empty buffer. You should see start fire enabled with a quote from Kelsey at the top of the screen. You should be able to jump quickly. However, the line may not be showing up. Things are firing up. Pop a new file. Alright, I don't need that. Last thing you'll do is configure Lua line. Browser is frozen now. Shoot, the whole PC is frozen. Okay. I'm not sure why that's happening. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, to quickly find files. Alright, so I do want telescope. Um, Alright, yeah, so these are things that I would like to install. I'm not sure why the browser is freezing so much. Dang. Alright, telescope. Let's install that. Alright, does this just work like this? Alright, let's do that. Let's see the Lua. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Are you still in school or do you work? Uh, I am currently in college and I do not have a job at the moment. Oops, I tell Fires equals. I am also in college learning app dev. Very cool. Are you learning like um, like using React Native or something like that, or um, Android development with Java or Kotlin or whatever, or like Swift Apple development? Okay. All right. Let's try that. Do Packer install. Java. Okay, so Android. Um, yeah, Java it gets a lot of hate, and it's got some problems. But I do like, I kind of like, kind of like Java, which is a controversial opinion. Okay, let's see. Uh, what is this? What is that doing? I already have it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Then all right, what do we have to do? <clears throat> okay. Help tell tell us what? No health check found. So it seems to have not installed properly. Uh -huh.
Hmm. Unnamed laying on your readme, can you update it to make it clear how to run the repo? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I can actually update that really quick. Uh, let me open that up. Uh, okay. So, in here, readme. Alright, so let's do... Oops. Not sure what that was. Uh, quick start. Uh, let's see. GitHub markdown code. I forget how to put code. I'm going to do dependencies, uh, GCC, NASM, uh, GCC, NASM. Uh, I think that's, I think that's all you need. Uh, okay. <coughs> I'll close that. Um, yeah, I don't care about headings. I need code. Coding code right here. Okay, yeah, 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 something like this. So, let's do that. Alright, uh, let's see. So, you need to... Once the dependencies are installed, then you run build.sh, and then you run build slash un, uh, file name, output file. Something like that, I think. Uh, so, yeah, you do build.sh, uh, there's a lot of warnings that I have not fixed yet. Uh, build, and it builds that. And yeah, so you just provide the file name. So if we go into examples, right, I have this here. So I can do dot high slash build slash un uh, fizzbuzz fizzbuzz. And then it builds it. Uh, there's some extra files, but then there's also the fizzbuzz file. So that's how you do it. So I will push that. Hopefully that is clear enough. Okay, uh, yeah, that should be up now. And yeah, okay. So yeah, you just need GCC and NASM because that is what is in the, uh, well, the build sh is GCC and then uh, when it builds the assembly, it needs NASM. So yes, that is all you need for it though. Uh, okay, let's see, where were we at? Um, we're trying to set this up. <coughs> Telescope. Right, let me just let me grab these. Shoot. Uh, I don't need this stuff. If we can actually let's go back in there. Let's do packer install. I'm not sure what the red line's about. Okay. Um, Alright, now let's see if we can do Okay. That seems to be working a bit better now. Uh, so if we do telescope find five. Telescope. Five, five. There we go. Yes. Okay. We can just navigate up and down and can type. Alright. Yeah. So I will make a key line for that actually. So map in normal mode. Uh, space. And then let's see. F. F. And then yeah. Telescope. Find file. There we go. Let's see. So I'm gonna need to refresh this, but yeah. All right. Let's do a file. That do a file. Is that correct? All right. Seems to have not worked. Try that. Oh, I see what the problem is. Space. I have to actually spell it right. There we go. So that works. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Key. 
All right, yes, and let's see. Uh, tag bar toggle. Okay. Uh, let me actually see what that said. Uh, okay, what does that even do, actually? Take a look. Yeah, I don't need that. Uh, let's see. What were the other one? Uh, get. All right, file. All right, so that is good. You do see an error message that says I'm in Git. Okay. And then lines pop. Alright. There are a few changes that can be made to better integrate. Uh yeah. So let's go in it not move. And then auto pairs. Okay, now let's add some key binding. Seems to be working. Uh, yeah, I very much like that. Uh, yes, indeed. So let's remove toggle test.py. <coughs> okay, new keys out Lua file and some new key files. Alright, Indian lines toggle. Yeah, alright, so I got what I wanted from that. So let's see, save and source the file. Then use your leader key. Alright, yes. Integrating with Git. Navigate to a Git repository on your local machine and open a new room bar. Alright, let me go to uh, in here. Oops. And then Git. Okay, quit out of that. And let's see. Git status. Link is up to date. Okay. Alright, yeah, so I gotta learn how to do all this stuff. Oh, that's not exactly. I like that. I like that. Uh, you can use Q, but you already knew that. Uh, what this looks like in practice. Where to go next? Floating term. Alright, I can close this now. <coughs> Reverse changes even after the file. I don't need that. Quickly toggle comments. Let's see, what does that mean? Yeah, okay. No. Uh, tree sitter. Yeah. Tree sitter. Startup time. Is that better? I don't. Uh, hopefully it is. Hopefully it is better and it works. Um. Okay. So let's do. Auto complete in new vim. Uh, let's see. Auto complete in new vim. Uh, yeah, 
Yani. Let's see. Okay. Um. Yeah, because that's all. I got pretty much everything else that I needed. So, uh, find files, uh, new tab. Maybe I should make one for closing tab. Yeah, let me look at that next. Uh, let's see. Any tabs. <coughs> tab page, yeah. Close tab. Tab close. All right, I will add one for that. Then Lua slash keys. Then normal mode. <coughs> uh, let's see. So space, and then what would be good? W maybe. Um. Yeah, sure. We'll do Q for now. Then tab close. There we go, and then let's see. Yeah, all right, tab close. There we go. So we can make a new tab and we can close the tab. Uh, how do you navigate the tab? Close all of your tab. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Switching to another one. Tab next. Yeah, okay. So let's see. And, uh, let's do space tab. I think that should work, and then we'll do tab next. And let's see, yeah, tab next. All right, so let's make a new tab, tab next. All right, yeah, I like that. And then we'll just do this, and we'll do let's see, the space. Uh, how do I want to go back? Maybe space tab goes back, and then just tab is tab next. Yeah, 10 next minus. Okay, and let's see. So, yeah, now we can open a new tab, and then you press tab, you go to tab next. Yeah, tab next, and then space tab goes tab minus. So, we open a bunch of tabs. We can do space tab to go back, and then just tab to go forward. Alright, yes, and we can close the tab. Okay, it's very nice. It's starting to come together, you know? Uh, yeah, I just want to do... I just want the auto-completion thing, LSP. LSP stuff. Wisp. Wisp. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see if we can find uh, that. Do, 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 do. All right, let's see if this works. So let's open, let's go to Lua, uh, plugins. Okay, whoops. And then we do indent. Bang. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, so this I need to select all of them. Nope. There we go. And there we go. And now let's do hacker install. Let's see. Hmm. Did it work? Okay, and then bang, and then all right, 
it's still in here, I guess. Uh, and let's do plug that lure. Unexpected symbol. Line 35. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. So, no. <coughs> Nothing that was supposed to happen this year. Alright, uh, and then yeah, the end here, local, what's required, comp, comp dot setup, mapping, equals, c space, c space, okay, equals comp dot mapping dot complete, and then sources equals name equals buffer name equals and then wisp name equals ultra snips All right uh, let's see if that works okay okay install Alright, that is used twice, so let's quit out of this. Let's get rid of Okay. Okay, and yeah, so if you do um, test.py, alright, uh, now I have to do six picks. Hello, print, hello, return, negative one, uh, let's see, yeah, I'm in. Oops. print, <coughs> okay, sure. Uh, let's. All right, that's good. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that I need particularly? Um, yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. That's million plus. Let's see if there's any other ones that seem particularly interesting. Package manager, okay. Control successor. Okay. Yeah, that's I don't need that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Diagnostics, completion. AI, I don't, yeah, I don't need any of that. For green, Flutter, and Dart, uh, is there any that I use? Python, F string. Let me actually, I want to try that. Print, uh, what? Yeah, I like it. Let me see if that actually works. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get it to work. Uh, Python, F string. Yeah. So I would like that. Uh, yeah. Plug that Lua. And then up here, I will just... Let's see, is that actually right? Um, perhaps. Okay, and how do we talk? Read it at. No. Fine, okay, print. Text. Text. And then. 
language. Um, what do you mean exactly? Uh, Python is what I'm writing this in, but the configuration is in Lua. Coding. Uh, well, yeah, it's Lua. It actually says the language right here. Uh, that is what NeoVim is configured with and written in. I don't know if it's written in, but it's configured with that. Yeah. Does it just run the program test? Uh, no. So what? <coughs> I'm just testing this. Uh, I'm installing plugins for NeoVim, which is just uh, it is a it's a text editor basically. On the test, I was just testing. Um, basically, I'm writing. Uh, I'm using this plugin, which is for Python, to basically toggle the state of a string, if it's F or not. Uh, that was all I was testing. So the test.py, I removed it now. Um, it was just to test that. Yeah, and I'm just basically going through different plugins to install. Go in, yeah, no one cares. Okay. I'm not sure if I need too many more. Let's actually let's look at some moving themes. Killer scheme. Alright, um yeah well let's look at doesn't VS Code just have auto these plugins or you need to import it into well so in VS Code uh why have VS Code in which is it's VS Code. Uh, I can open that up. Uh, you followed. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so I have VS Code. Um, I used to use this. Uh, you can install in sick. You can install extensions. Um, but the problem with VS Code, um, basically, it's not as extensible, if that's the right word, as NeoVim. Uh, like it, NeoVim is pretty easy to configure. Um, like in terms of actually writing your own plugins for it. Um, and then as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Also, I can close that. I haven't used that in a while. It's a lot lighter weight. So like you saw, like here, I'm gonna open VS Code right now. So I just press the key bindings that I have. Uh, let's see, it might not work actually, because I'm in here. Whoops. Let me put out of this. Alright, I'm gonna press it now. Might not work. Uh hang on. No. Alright, now I'll press. Alright, I'm not sure if it's opening. I just had it open. Uh, here, I'll just run. Codium. There we go. You saw how long that took. 
um, but with NeoVim, oh, I can just do this, right? There, and now it's open, and I can start editing stuff. And, um, yeah, it's like, it's maybe a bit easier to get started with VS Code, and it takes a bit more setup for NeoVim, but it's worth it. Um, and then also, it's built in with, like, different keybinds that are very useful. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what this red bar is about, exactly. Uh, yeah. Wait. Uh, yeah, and I can, now I have some stuff set up, so I can find the different files in here. File preview, too, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I can just go up and down like this, and then I can open different files. Um, yeah. I can open the tree like that, to select files that way as well. I can make new tabs, and I can... Uh, go through the tabs. Uh, and I can quit out of the tabs. All that stuff. So, yeah. It takes some more setup, but it's worth it. Um, because it's way lighter weight. Like, compare because, uh, VS Code is written and basically it's packaged with a browser, so that adds a lot of storage space and a lot of overhead, which slows it down a lot. Uh, yeah. Alright, yeah, I say <coughs> that's pretty good. Um, I'll probably look through and install some more plugins and configure some key bindings and stuff. But for now, I'd say that is pretty good. So I will, let's see, uh, here is the link to, this is just the page I use to basically follow the instructions. If someone's interested, it's in the chat. Um, so VS Code is less efficient once you get your preference done for this NeoVim software. Uh, basically, um, of course, it does vary because, uh, like NeoVim, when you start, it's not necessarily clear like even how to quit or whatever. But if you get good at NeoVim, pretty much anybody is gonna be faster using it than using VS Code if you actually get good at it. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, less overhead, like I said. So it's fast, basically. And it's, uh, like, if you have, like, an older computer that's a lot slower, um, you, it's going to be really snappy using NeoVim um, compared to using uh, VS Code. Uh, there's no, Let me see if I can... Uh, NeoVim versus VS Code. It's so like... Uh, there's a lot of other reasons. How long have you been coding? Uh, well, so about six years ago, I started learning like game development. Uh, not so I coded with it. It was coding. Um, yeah. So it's basically been six years, but I'm not very good. But yeah, about six years. Uh, yeah. Coding ten. What are the trade offs? Uh, I'm trying to find like a good article that sort of sort of shows it up. I'm assuming, but this looks like completely new stuff to me, and I've been coding for six years. Um, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, there, it's such like a big field, so many different things, where you could have been pr uh, programming for like 20, 30 years, and then there's still gonna be stuff that's new to you. Like um, something pretty recent is like all the machine learning kind of stuff. Uh, and artificial intelligence or whatever so you could be someone who started coding in like the 80s or whatever did start at 11 years old very nice so you uh i started when i was 12 so you got a head start on me um yeah uh yeah i'm just trying to find like a good comparison all right um what are the differences user interface yeah editing features yeah this is yeah, this sort of gives some good insight onto most of the advantages of NeoVim. And, like, there's some drawbacks, too. Like, uh, 
mostly it's the big setup like there's a big learning curve compared to something like VS Code but yeah Uh, yeah, kind of got sidetracked there, but yeah, specializing, even though you're a profession at that language is very, it's harder to go out to different coding languages. Well, it's not necessarily like even the languages that are harder, it's more uh, like the different, uh, like the different fields, you know, like you have, like it's not that hard even for an older person to learn a different language if you know a few already, because um, they are all pretty similar. It's just harder to switch, like if you specifically do like, well not harder, it's just the more you do the better diverse you are and compatible to learning. Yeah. Yeah. I think the hardest part to switch is like fields though. Like I was saying, um, like if you usually do graphical development or whatever, uh, and then you try to switch to um, like operating system development or whatever, that's not a very good comparison, but it's going to be a lot harder to do that than uh, than something else. Whereas when you're young, if you try to learn at least the basics of each thing, then in the future you'll be able to, uh, you know, you'll know which one you like the most and you'll be able to sort of go deeper into whichever ones there are. Okay. Uh, yes. Wait, so you're 18. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think I need to... Let's see, I can get rid of syntax. Yeah, I know it should still work. By the way, don't worry about reading chat so often, just get your work done. Uh, well, I'm kind of done now, so... Yeah, because uh, I got the most of the setup that I wanted to do done. Uh, so now I'm kind of just in reading chat. Mode. And I like reading chat, seeing what people have to say. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm pretty much done. Uh, so I'm going to end in a moment. Just looking through everything, making sure it all looks good. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. built solution uh well it's not really like a solution thing it was just configuring uh changing stuff like i'm not I'm not trying to solve any problem necessarily it's just basically changing the workflow of what i was used to that's basically what it's about and yeah so i got that all done yes yes all right uh let's see so we have that on files Tab, yep. All right, and yes, yeah, so that's pretty much all that I needed to do. So I got like a good setup going. So now I'm just gonna learn some more of the keybinds because there's a lot of keybinds and all that kind of stuff in Vim or NeoVim. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of learn those to be to improve my workflow and become faster. Um, but yeah, so that is about it. So if there's any other chats, I can respond to that uh, before I end. Before I end the stream. Um. Yes, actually one more thing. So on my YouTube channel. Now you good to end, I just got the one thing. Okay. Um anybody uh, I guess you're the only person watching, but um 
I've been trying to see what people want to watch. Uh, so I have on my YouTube channel, I just put this poll out with a couple of different things um, on what would be interesting for people to watch. So if you could vote on that, if you're interested, where do you get the different resources to learn different code? Um, all right. Uh, basically, uh, Google, well, not Google, I don't use Google, but search engines or YouTube. Uh, mostly so I just if there's something I want to learn like for example uh, if I wanted to learn C++ right uh, C++ tutorial just would search that uh, and then here's a start C++ tutorial uh, yeah so here's hello world all right and then I just look and basically see how the syntax works and then different things like there's a lot to C++ math um, all that stuff and then I just kind of read about it, watch some videos, and mostly practice, you know? Like, actually write this stuff out, you know? Yeah, so that's basically how I learn all that kind of stuff. Okay. Yes, indeed. Um, okay. Make sure we're all good. What's your YouTube? Oh, it's uh here. I can put the link. It is linked on my like uh page, but there's the link as well. Uh yeah, I just basically I don't pretty much just upload the VODs on there. Okay, yeah. So that's going to be the end. I uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, yeah. See you next time. Goodbye.